I'm Mary Maybe, and I may be starring a new series called The Mare Stars. And Mare Stars is my nickname, so it seemed like a nice little pun to make it The Mare Stars. And these are the most noteworthy things. My movie list is going to come a little later because I want to get to all the December releases, make sure I see them. So that will probably come out mid to late January. This is for the best books of the year. And I wanted to start off with honorable mentions. So here we go. We have The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and the sequel is actually over there. I got it from the library. I might return it. I don't know if it's the right time to read it. But it's the story about this girl and some other teens who have these, like, psychological skills. For instance, she's a profiler, so she can, like, see something about you and kind of tell what kind of person you are. And they use these skills to go so crimes and you know it's not even that inventive book or that intelligent but they're just fun books and isn't that all that really matters another book we have long way home and this is the finale to the trilogy of companions from the uh thunder road books it's long way home by katie mcgarry which i think i already said i have this signed and these series says mary take the long way home by katie mcgarry these series are about this motorcycle group and their families and what it means to be a family and friendship and all that stuff. And the first book is my favorite, but besides that, the third one is. The third one has my favorite character who is Violet, who's kind of like, I want to get out of this town. I don't want to be stuck here in small town. And they're just very, very insightful and character developed stories. Next, we have Secret, and I have not read the sequel and final conclusion, which is Scandal. So this one is signed. I plan to read it as my next read for 2018 because this was the first book I read in 2017. So this is going to be the first book I read in 2018. It says to Mary, start a scandal. And these stories about these kids who also have psychic abilities, but a little different, like the main character and almost everyone can read people's thoughts. So you have to drown it out and they use these skills to help the KGB but they're being forced to that they don't really want to help the KGB and they're very like thriller you want to know what happens next you can't put it down. Another honorable mention is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows and this is about Lady Jane who's the ruler for I believe it's either seven or nine days. I'm a little embarrassed I didn't remember that but basically Instead of the Catholics versus the Protestants, it's the Edians versus the Verity, and I forget which ones which. I believe the Edians are the shapeshifters, and those people can transform into one specific animal, and the Verities are just humans, and it's just a spoof book that is hilarious. The last honorable mention is Tell Me Three Things by Julia Julie Buxbaum. And it's a big you've got mail thing where she's texting this boy. She's just moved across country and the boy's like, I can help you out in high school. And she's like, oh, who are you? And it's just very cute and very relatable. Now we move on to the list. 10, Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the third book in the Raven Cycle. And this would win out for this year out of default because I've read the other two books. And the fourth book I just bought the other day. But I will talk about the first book because no spoilers. It is a really crazy saga that almost can't be summed up, but it's got beautiful lyrics and imagery, and it's about this one girl whose family's all this fortune tellers, and they have all these fortunes. She has this fortune that she'll either kiss the love of her life, or he'll die, and she's like, whoa, I don't want that, I don't want that. And on the other side, you have Gainsey and his rich friends, and they're trying to find this ley line, and I don't want to spoil anything else, but that doesn't sound like the best book. When you read the books, they are the best books ever. Nine goes to Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and the reason it's low on the list is because, while I think it might be one of the best written books, I didn't really like it as I read it. I thought it was mediocre. It's when I started re seeing other people's analysis of the book that everyone got something else out of the book, but it all seemed plausible, which is a really cool thing for a book to do and it really made me love the book. Eight goes to Wonder by RJ Policio, which I think we all know what it is about because we've all seen the trailer 5,000 times. I actually did not get to see the movie, which I am very bummed about, but that's a story for another day. The reason this book's so good is you can sympathize with every character and they do bad things in this book, but you sympathize for everyone, which is quite the accomplishment. 
Seven goes to the first two volumes of Death Note, and the series, there's another series on this list, I just put them together because I didn't want to take them more than one spot, I wanted to talk about all the books, all the books. Death Note, there's a lot to it, but I don't want to spoil anything. And no, I did not watch the Netflix show. I didn't even know it was being a Netflix show when I watched it. It is about this boy who finds a notebook, and if he writes the name in the notebook, that person will die. And it's this huge thing about being a vigilante, and it really makes you think. And I don't want to spoil anything, because this author has thought of everything. And you turn the page, and you're like, whoa, I never thought about that. Or at least I didn't think about that. Well, I'm back for six. There were quite a few technical difficulties yesterday. I got quite stressed out, but I'm back. And we're going to do the top six. Yes, we are. I got, um, I turned off the cuckoo clock that was going up on there. That was quite stressful. There were a lot of technological problems, which I think will still be stressful, but I'm going to say, hey, nobody watches these videos anymore. They don't have to be perfect. I even hooked up the Himalayan rock salt. So this mineral, the mineral, this mineral should be keeping me cool and nice and chill. And let's begin. At six, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. You may recognize the name. He is the maker of Riverdale, and it was illustrated by Robert Hack. It is a satanic retelling of Sabrina, and what's really good about it is you see all the roots of Sabrina, but you never know where it's going to go, and it is completely different. It also is an homage to early horror, and it's just got wonderful illustrations. In fifth place, The Golden Five Rings, we have I Finally Finished. The Ask and the Answer in Monsters of Men, the completion of the Chaos Walking Trilogy, and each one of these deals with a different issue, and they deal with quite philosophical debates, but I will talk about the first book, because I don't want any spoilers, even though I think all three books hold up, and the book, which is called The Knife of Never Letting It Go, is about a world in which everyone can hear your thoughts, and how do you escape when everyone can hear your thoughts? It deals with privacy, dictatorship, indoctrination of youth, as well as other things. I think these are very intelligent books, and bonus, they're becoming a movie. In uh, fourth place, we have Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Moldovsky. I really love this book because it's really eerie, and I highly, well, eerie might not be the right word, creepy. It's a lot like The Heathers, and I highly recommend the audiobook because it was such a, like, Wyona Ryder style book. It's about these fangirls who kidnap the star of the band, and it's all about who do we trust, do we look past certain people, but that's like at the for the forefront is fun. The forefront's this crazy zany adventure that's just really delightful and eerie and beautiful. It's a fun ride. Beautiful and eerie is not the right word. It's a fun ride. It's a lot. If you like the Heathers, I think you will like it. What is beautiful is what I believe is three, right? The Alchemist by Apollo Cahul. And this book doesn't have much of a plot, but it just deals with what it means to hope, believe, and dream. And it's just beautiful, beautiful prose. And I highlighted half this book, so I'm wondering why I can't find any of the highlights. Here's one I highlighted. When each day is the same as the next, because people fail to recognize the good things that happen in their lives every day the sun rises. Very gorgeous book and very inspiring. Now, this year for number two, in the last two years, I think I've read all the Harry Potter books. I may not have read the second book, which is funny because this is two, two, not intentional. But my favorite of the series by far is The Order of the Phoenix. I feel like it was such an intelligent way of writing. And we all know what happens in this book, so I don't feel like I need to go into that. But stuff, it's the little things like Weasley is our king that I thought was executed so perfectly and that this is the golden book. And when I started filming, I had just finished my favorite book of the year, which is why I decided to go ahead with this book and this role instead of uh, The Greatest Showman. But we are here at another day, so I finished this book yesterday, and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I absolutely love this book. If you're into the Enlightenment, I think you'll like it. No, it is not a horror that will scare you. It's a horror that will make you question. It's a horror that will make you think. And also, look up Mary Shelley's history, because she's a very fascinating woman. And I don't want to go too much into it, because I think we all know that this is about a monster who is created in life. And a lot of the questions are questions that are addressed in the book. That was weird of me. I'm sorry. And I will say, I didn't make the disclaimer at the beginning, all these books have not been rereads 
or nonfiction because I feel like nonfiction there are different sets of rules and rereads isn't really fair. There you have it, my top 10 bucks of the year.